what is going on all you bus nuts geeks and enthusiasts out there welcome to another episode of motor coach world my name is james for anyone who has ever taken a bus anywhere part of the whole bus riding experience is well waiting for the bus especially for those that use the bus as their primary means of getting around waiting for the bus is part of their daily routine and if you're someone who takes a bus a lot i'll bet a week's worth of jim's original hot dogs that you've had to deal with a bus that didn't arrive on time now some of you may be thinking james it's pretty obvious why buses are sometimes late is this really worth a video it's a risk i know well you may be surprised because there are some pretty complex factors that play into what causes passengers to have to wait for a late bus so i'm gonna say this topic is definitely worth a video especially if you're a passenger that takes the bus regularly I'm not sure that I concur with that reasoning. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the common reasons why buses sometimes arrive late and how passengers usually react to it. There are a lot of things that have to go right every day, every hour, and every minute for your bus to get to you at exactly the time that's printed on the bus schedule. And also the same for getting you to your destination. I mean, really think about all the factors. First, the driver has to get to work. Hopefully he or she woke up on time and doesn't get stuck in traffic uh, getting to work. Aside from the driver, hopefully dispatch, the technicians, as well as everyone else in the office got everything right as far as all the logistics go when it comes to sending out a trip. I'm gonna call all this the staff and employee factor. Then there's the bus itself. It has thousands of moving parts that all have to work together for the bus to move when the driver pushes on the accelerator pedal. From the engine and transmission itself to the tire staying inflated to the airlines and hoses not leaking or getting clogged with ice and moisture, all the way down to all the microchips and computer boards and electronic sensors that are all part of the working systems in today's modern design. Now, keep in mind, if I were to list everything that keeps a bus moving, this video would take hours, if not days. So the things that I mentioned just now were just a fraction of the things that a bus needs to be able to move. With all that said, if any of these parts should fail, the bus will stop moving, which means you, the passenger, waiting for the bus to get to you at the time promised on the bus schedule is not going to happen. Let's call all of this the mechanical factor. Now imagine having to drive this 45 foot long, 12 feet tall vehicle through tens if not hundreds of miles of road to get to the bus stop, which really doesn't sound too bad, but with thousands of cars and other trucks and buses between you and your bus stop, what may seem like a simple Sunday drive can turn into a bit of a cluster. I mean, if any one of these other vehicles on the road break down or hit each other, or maybe even your bus on the way to the bus stop, well, you're going to be sitting for a while waiting for a police report or a tow truck to clean up the traffic jam. On top of all that, there are construction zones and weather. If there's snow, ice, fog, rainstorms, high winds, all of these factors also make it so that a bus will have to travel slower to be safe as well as slow down for all the rest of the traffic that will also be traveling slower so they don't cause an accident. Let's call all of this the outside factor. So if you really think about all these moving parts and factors, it's really a miracle that a bus can ever make it to any bus stop on time, let alone do it repeatedly multiple times a day. In fact, in some cases, the managers of certain bus companies that operate scheduled routes understand that the area they operate in is simply not possible to promise any kind of timetable due to either traffic or other conditions. For example, my family and I recently went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee for vacation. Nick White and Charlie Holbrook, who are both managers at Gatlinburg Transit System, reached out to me and kindly gave my family and I a tour of their office. Charlie even gave me a model trolley bus. I definitely felt the Southern hospitality. Thanks again, Nick and Charlie, for taking such good care of my family and I. Well, anyways, I asked both Nick and Charlie about how they managed to keep their routes on a timetable given how bad traffic was from all the tourists in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Well, Nick replied, we simply can't. There is no timetable. Just a route and tourists can hop on when they see one of our buses and ride it to their desired stop. But the routes are short enough and operate enough vehicles where it doesn't really take long for a trolley bus to actually show up. So it still remains somewhat convenient 
for the riders to utilize and get around on in Gatlinburg. And Gatlinburg Transit isn't the only bus operation that does things this way. There are bus systems all over the world that simply keep a certain number of vehicles on a route circling without a promised timetable because of uncontrollable environments. But with all that said, there's one more factor that no one really thinks about that also contributes quite frequently to buses becoming delayed. And that, my friends, are the passengers themselves. I can't tell you how many times I've had passengers run up to my bus after I've already closed my luggage bay doors and done all of my departure checks and about to pull off. Now, instead of pulling off to my next stop filled with passengers waiting for me, I have to stop, pop the parking brakes, walk off my bus once again and open all the luggage bay doors, pull out my scanner and wait for the frantic out of breath passenger to pull out their ticket so that I can scan it and load their luggage. Now that's assuming the passenger actually has a boarding pass or ticket because sometimes on top of the five minutes that I'm already delayed now to stop and wait for the late passenger to board, I'm not gonna wait for 10 more minutes to listen to a sob story of why he or she doesn't have a ticket or for the passenger to fumble through all of the stuff to locate their ticket. Sometimes the passenger's bags are still in the trunk of the Uber or friend's car that they took to get to the bus stop, which is parked half a parking lot away because the passenger bolted out of the vehicle to run up to the bus stop to stop me from leaving at my scheduled departure time. So now I'm 15 to 20 minutes late in order to accommodate this one passenger while delaying the rest of the 50 passengers that are either on my bus or waiting for me at the next bus stop. Now I realized I sound really insensitive to this one passenger's needs right now. And believe me, I'm not. I mean, I've messed my fair share of buses and I know what it feels like. But as a bus operator with a job to do, I have to choose who I'm sympathetic to. The one person who was late getting to the bus stop or the 50 people who did everything right and made it on time to the bus stop who will now be delayed because of this one passenger. So if I actually choose to accommodate this one late passenger, I'm now gonna be 15 to 20 minutes late getting everyone else to their destination. On the other hand of all this, if I decide not to wait for the passenger running up to my bus and tell the passenger, I'm sorry, I have to get going and you should have been on time, you probably need to catch the next bus, well, this will probably cause either the passenger or the passenger's parents, because most of our passengers are college students, to leave us a one-star review, light us up on social media, and blow up our phone lines telling us how evil and horrible we are as a business for not waiting for Junior to get on our bus. The most fun ones are when passengers who miss their bus for being late misrepresents the entire situation on social media by saying things like, the bus left early and left me stranded and ruined all my plans or, or one of my favorite situations, which when the passenger lied to her parents telling them that our bus left 10 minutes early and now mom and dad have to drive three hours to pick up Junior on campus. Well, we had a lot of fun that day explaining to mom and dad that our buses have GPS tracking as well as cameras on board with timestamps that prove our bus was on time or maybe even a little late leaving the bus stop. So maybe you should talk to Junior instead of screaming at our employees. The reasonable ones accept it and we get an apology, but some go as far as to tell us that our GPS is lying to us and that their son and daughter doesn't make these type of mistakes. And some simply hang up on us, but you know, still goes and leaves a bad review on a review website. If that's not bad enough, we've actually had times where a passenger's car driven by the parents has actually chased our bus down the interstate and attempted to force me to pull my bus over to the shoulder in the middle of a busy highway to try to get Junior on the bus. Or sometimes they've even pulled in front of my bus in the middle of a busy intersection and used their car as a roadblock expecting me to just walk off the bus, open the luggage bay, and check and board their kid. Now, needless to say that this is an extremely dangerous thing to do, highly illegal, and if you think that I'm gonna open my door for your kid after doing that, I would say you need a better understanding of how things work in this world. In the past, people got from point A to point B via wagons pulled by horses through dangerous areas and wilderness. Ships traveled at the mercy of the wind and no one had any idea of what the weather was going to be like during the trip. Even then, people dared to start businesses advertising to transport passengers 
across the vast wilderness, and even then, a departure time and an arrival time were given, although in a very loose and flexible sense. Despite the fact that mass transportation is much safer, reliable, and much more comfortable today, the human race has yet to overcome all the factors that play into whether or not a man-made vehicle driven by a person carrying passengers will arrive at the promised time or not. As I get older and wiser working in the transportation industry, I've learned that the more experienced travelers, like business people that fly and travel all the time for work, those are the folks that are much more understanding and forgiving when delays happen. They come to realize, as I have, that transportation is not a precise thing and you can't really expect it to be. It's simply unrealistic for anyone to expect that a bus or a plane or ship or train will never be delayed for them if they decide to buy a ticket on one. Also, if you're a passenger or soon to be a passenger on one of the forms of public transportation that I've mentioned, keep in mind that when these delays do happen, it sucks for everyone. It sucks for the passenger who wants to get to their destination. It sucks for the driver who wants to finish his or her workday. And it sucks for the company who wants to get their vehicle back so that it can go out again for the next group of passengers that are waiting on it. And drivers, keep in mind that after a delay, rushing to catch up on time is usually not the best idea. At Period Charter, the company I work for, I like to tell the drivers that in this industry, even if you're late, you're on time. Never rush to catch up on your itinerary. Never be nervous or feel rushed while you're driving. Even if you're behind, doing so will only put you and your passengers at risk for being in an accident, which will cause another delay. And don't get me wrong, you are probably gonna get dirty looks and snide comments for the rest of your route. And if you're really lucky, you'll get a mouthful of colorful metaphors from a Karen or two. Just gotta embrace the suck. Double dumbass on you! Now I realize that at this point in the video, I painted a pretty bad image for bus passengers in this video. Please understand that out of the millions of passengers that ride with Peoria Charter, the company that I work for, we only encounter these types of problems one to 2% of the time. Also keep in mind that some of the experiences I've mentioned here are from three different bus companies that I have driven for over the span of the last 15 years. And there's one thing that I've learned from the past 15 years of operating and managing a fleet of commercial passenger vehicles is that there are definitely more good people out there than there are bad ones. It's just that the bad ones are more entertaining to talk about. Also, when it comes to all of these factors that I've mentioned with all the different things that cause a bus not to arrive on time, it's really not the passenger's job to understand all the logistics and hurdles that go into running a bus company as well as driving a bus. I mean, after all, that's what they pay people like me and everyone else who works in the bus industry to do, I mean, to manage all of this. They pay us to deliver what we promise to deliver. And if we as a bus company promise that we can get from point A to point B by this time, then we as a bus company should do the homework to make sure that it's possible and safe to do so. So passengers, if you can take away anything from this video, please understand that transportation is a very complex line of work and everyone involved works every second of every day to prevent and minimize delays and hiccups during your journey. Give them a break and be understanding about it because even if you yell and scream and throw tantrums, no one is going to be able to pull a bus, train, or plane out of thin air with a full crew ready to satisfy your tantrum at that very moment. I mean, this isn't retail where we have a half million dollar bus with a driver sitting in the back room waiting for someone smarter than the average passenger to ask about it. What do you think is back there, Santa's workshop? The only thing back there is a clipboard with our schedules and some brownies Darcy brought in. And if a delay is caused by negligence of a bus company, the company should do the right thing and make it right for the customer. But if a bus is late due to traffic, weather, or something completely out of anyone's control, I mean, please don't try to do this whole cancel culture thing. I mean, I know it's really popular right now, it's kind of a trend, but it doesn't help the company get better by any means, and it's not gonna help you with your future transportation needs. Before I let you guys go, I just wanna mention one of our drivers that's been with Peoria Charter for over 11 years. His name is Ron Cochran. He's one of the most knowledgeable and skilled motor coach operators that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Well, he's currently battling kidney disease and is unable to drive anymore due to his condition. Peoria Charter is currently 
raising funds to help Ron and his family get through this challenging time. We have a GoFundMe up for Ron. If any of you would like to help a fellow bus nut geek and driver out, well, I'll put the link to Ron's GoFundMe page down in the link below. And Ron, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world. <laughs>